Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at integration with RAD GridView using RAD Data Bars. As a reminder, both RAD GridView and RAD Data Bars are part of the Telerik RAD Controls for Silverlight and RAD Controls for WPF Control Suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we'll be looking at how we implement RAD GridView, and then we're going to add some data in the code behind so we actually have something to display. Finally, we'll take a look at templating RAD Data Bar, RAD Stack Data Bar, and the RAD Stack 100 Data Bar to showcase our data better in RAD GridView. Stepping into Visual Studio, I've already worked out the entire project for this just to save you from having to watch a ton of typing on this video, but I'll go step by step through what we've actually done here so you can have a full understanding of how we actually integrate the RAD data bars into RAD grid view. First thing you'll notice is that I've defined a RAD grid view, I've given it a name, we're showing column footers, and we're not auto-generating columns. This way we can define our columns collection, which you see immediately below, to contain all the different grid view data columns and templated columns that we'd like to use. Taking a quick peek at our columns, we can see we have an ID with a data member binding of ID, date of something, which is appropriately enough going to the sometime date time value, and then our bar value that's going to data bar value. That's a single integer value that we can use for the standard data bar, but don't worry, we're going to have some collections that we're using for the stacked and stacked 100 data bars. Taking a peek at the code behind, you can see in our loaded event, we're creating a new observable collection of grid view data item class. Yes, that's very hard to say in one breath. We're creating a random and then we do a quick loop to go through our grid view data item class. To see our class structure, grid view data item has an ID, a daytime sometime, observable collection of rad data bar item class called data bar items, and then our data bar value for the standard data bar. The rad data bar item class is the same that you've seen in the previous two videos that has a string for tooltip and an int for bar value. Stepping back up into our for loop, for every one of these 25 grid view data item classes, we're setting the ID to the iterator Sometime is a daytime based on today. Data bar value is a random spanning from negative 25 to 25. And our data bar items have random values from 1 to 10 and a tooltip appropriate for the position it has in the collection. All these get looped into our grid items collection and then rad grid view item source is set to that collection. Now if we go ahead and run this project, we can see what it looks like without any data visualization looped in. Now with our project loaded, we can see the ID, the date value, and that bar value Except, like I said, there's no data visualization involved here, so our bar value is looking kind of boring. So we'll go ahead and close out Internet Explorer, and we'll make our first change, which is incorporating the RAD data bar. We can go ahead and get rid of this column, since we'll be representing bar value with something much nicer to look at. And we're going to go and uncomment this whole chunk of code, but I'll explain what we've done here. Here in our grid view data column, we still have the same header of bar value, at this time we're setting an explicit width for the column because we want to actually ensure that we have enough width to properly display our visualization. For the grid view data column, we're setting the cell template to a new data template, which includes a rad data bar. And on the rad data bar, we've included a margin, minimum, maximum, height, and our value is bound to that data bar value that we had displaying in the previous column. I've also gone ahead and added the footer to the grid view data column, which is why it's important that this show column footers property is set to true on rad grid view. And within the footer, we can see that we're setting a rad data axis. It has the same margin as rad data bar that ensures that all your values line up, as well as the same minimum and maximum. This will give us a great display for showcasing the actual bounds of what our rad data bar is looking like, which leaves out any guesswork as far as what maximum and minimum values we're displaying and what scale we're actually looking at. If we go ahead and run the project again, we're going to see that we now have a rad data bar displaying with our data axis in the column footer. And now our Internet Explorer is loaded. You can see this is now displaying. We have our positive and negative values for data bar. And one thing that we didn't showcase before is that if you have a value that goes past the lowermost axis minimum or above the maximum value, you'll see that the data bar actually does a nice little visual trick to indicate that it's going past the upper extent or past the lower extent, which is a helpful little tool for seeing if you have any kind of outliers or values that really don't belong in your data set. Back into our XAML, next up is the stack data bar. And again, I have some code to uncomment, save you watching me type a lot of XAML. And in the stack data bar, we're seeing the same kind of setup that we had for the traditional data bar, where we have a header and a set width on the grid view column. The grid view column cell template contains our rad stack data bar, except this one has an item source set to data bar items. So that collection we built up in the code behind is now going to be displayed here. Of course, since we're using stack data bar, we set the value path and the tooltip path to the values from our entity so that it actually knows what values to use for displaying. We want to show tooltips. We're setting the horizontal and vertical alignment, the height, the minimum, the maximum, and the margin. And of course, 
in our footer, we're setting a raw data axis with that same minimum, maximum, and margin so that everything lines up nicely. Once again, we'll run our project and we can see the rad stack data bar in action. As you can see, now we have our rad data bar as well as our stack data bar. And the cool thing, since the stack data bar and the data axis are going to work proportionally, we can go and increase the width of this column if we need a little bit better view on our stack data bar and everything that's showing up. And the axis spans appropriately and adds more labels as required. So we have the ability to look at the tooltips, see which item has which value, and see all of our different values displaying in the grid view. But one step better, we can add our stacked 100 data bar so we actually see proportionally where these items fit in comparison to one another. This is again another quick uncomment and we see again a similar setup. Grid view data item has a header, a width, and in our cell template we set a brand new data template with our rad stacked 100 data bar and you're going to notice a lot of the same values from our stacked data bar. That being item source, value path, tooltip path, show tooltips, height, and margin. We don't have to go and set a minimum and maximum because like I said before, Stack 100 data bar is going to fill all the available space, but proportionally show where the values relate to one another. So it's a really quick and easy visualization to see maybe which value is the biggest out of all, or how these different values compare over time. Go ahead and run our project. Wait for Internet Explorer one last time. And now you can see we have all three data bars displaying in our RAD grid view. Our traditional data bar value has a single positive or negative, and we have those indicators to show if it goes past the minimum or maximum. Our stack data bar is showing the items on a scale from 0 to 40, and you can see how they stack up, how they compare to one another. And finally, our stack 100 data bar is showing the items proportional to one another, so you can see for any given row which item kind of stands out against the others, how they compare, or say you're tracking for value over time, you can see how it's comparing from day to day by just quickly scrolling through which makes it a lot easier to look at than a standard list or collection because the quick visualization and the color of everything is making the values stand out and pop, which really adds some nice visual flair to your application. So if you've seen how quickly and easily you can integrate the RAD data bars with RAD grid view, and like I said, I didn't do a lot of typing in the video today, but you do have access to the full download for this so you can see all this stuff in action, and seeing everything actually working and going is a lot more important than watching me type 45 or 70 lines of XAML. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for more XAML clicks as we continue to fill out our library of videos for the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF.